is a story about a war. That's exciting, huh? As long as you're not in them, they're pretty exciting. Now, the Israelites were fighting. The Israelites were on this side of a valley, and the Philistines were on this side of a valley. And the valley was here. Kind of a, we got a smiley face going on here. Anyway, so they were on two sides of a valley, and the Philistines were bigger and stronger than the Israelites. And that made the Israelites a little bit nervous, and it made the Philistines a little bit confident. And to top it off, they had a giant on their team, a guy named Goliath. And he came walking out like giants. I don't know how. Maybe they do it like this. Anyway, he came walking out like a giant did, and he would say, Hey, you Israelites, I'm not scared of you. Come over and fight me. If you beat me up, you win. But if I beat you up, we win. Ha ha. And all of the Israelites were sitting there watching that. Every day the guy would come out, Goliath would come out, the big old giant, and they'd be shaking in their boots. Or if they were wearing slippers, little bunny slippers, they'd be shaking in their little bunny slippers. And they would be looking at him thinking, oh no, I don't want to fight that guy. Well, it wasn't just the army that didn't want to fight him, it was the king. Now he had one of those guys with the pointy hats, you know. He had his pointy hat, and he was big and strong. He was bigger than anybody in the Israelites, but he was scared to fight the giant. <laughs> he was a chicken. And so he was, uh, he was saying, boy, I don't want to fight this giant, but this is getting pretty boring, watching the same show every day. The giant comes out, says, nah, 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 and we say, oh, I'm scared to fight you. That was pretty boring. Anyway, so David came along. He was a 15-year-old kid. He wasn't even in the army. And so he came along and he said, aren't you guys tired of having this guy say all this stuff, this giant? He's not very big, you know. And I said, uh, David, take a look again. He's really, really big. And he said, no, he isn't. I used to fight animals. And they said, uh, OK, whatever. And they sent him to the king. And the king said, how can you? You're, you're just a little kid. You're not, I mean, you're not even up to my smelly old armpit. And so the David said, that's OK, Kingsy. I was a, a taking care of sheep in my father's house. And well, out in the field. We didn't have very many in our house. But we had, had a bunch of them out in the field. I was out in the field taking care of the sheep. And a lion came and attacked him. And a bear came and attacked him. And both times, I took him out with my sling and ripped him apart and did mean things to him. Anyway, so I'm not scared of a giant. God's going to help me beat the giant, too. And uh, the king said, well, OK, go get him, tiger. And David went running out, and he found some rocks, little tiny rocks, or maybe big rocks. I, I think if I was going to fight a giant, I'd get big rocks. Anyway, he found some uh, things, and he put them in his, his uh, backpack. And then he took out a sling, and he took one of the rocks, he put it in his sling. A sling was a, a thing like a chunk of leather, and it had some leather or shoelace kind of things coming out from it. And he took it, and he started swinging it around. Now, he had practiced this a lot. He was swinging it and swinging it and swinging it. And he was swinging it and swinging it and swinging it. And the giant said, nah, 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 you can't, don't scare me. And David said, well, you've been making fun of God, and that was a mistake. Don't make fun of God. And the giant said, oh, your God's a wimp. And David said, oh, yeah, watch how he helps me beat you up. And he went, no. And the rock hit the giant right there in the head. Right there. Right there. See that little? Yeah, right there in that spot. And the, David was looking at him and thought, well, it's kind of cool that he fell, and it's cool that he has a rock stuck in his head, but I want to make sure. And he thought of a way to make sure. He took the giant sword, and he went, mm, whack, chopped his head off, and, uh, and then he grabbed his head and brought it back to the king. And it was probably dripping uh, stuff. And he brought it back and said, here, have a head, king. And the king said, ew, what a mess. But he also said, you done good, kid. Anyway, that's the story. Hi, I'm going to do an experiment now that involves air. Both of these generate CO2. The bubbles that form in this soda are from CO2 that's compressed into the liquid. The bubbles in the Pepsi are the same way. It's CO2 that's compressed into the liquid. And when you open the lid, the bubbles come up and they're carbon dioxide, CO2. CO2 is heavier than normal air. So I can pour the CO2 out of a bottle, if everything works right, and put out a flame. So I have a flame here. And uh, these are the raisins that I used in another experiment. I'm going to open the lid on here, and the bubbles in the pot will begin to rise when with more raisins. So that's kind of interesting. But it also means that this area is filling up with carbon dioxide. So I'm going to try to pour that carbon dioxide onto the fire, not the liquid. That one didn't have enough. This Pepsi might have enough carbon dioxide. Okay, so let's see if I can pour carbon dioxide on the fire.
Okay, that didn't work either. Now, uh, there's probably not enough carbon dioxide in here or here to pour out and put on the fire. One of the ways I use it is by making baking soda and vinegar. Uh, here in India, I was able to find vinegar, but I can't find baking soda. And so, by doing that, you can make a lot of CO2, and then it pours very nicely and puts out a fire. Of course, another way you can put out a fire like this with CO2 is put your thumb over the top, shake the bottle, and then turn it upside down and squirt it. The pressure would squirt the off. So that's an indirect way that CO2 can put out a fire. So if you can find baking soda and vinegar in your country, try this experiment. And if you can't, you can still try pop, just like I did. It may work and it may not work, but that's what an experiment is. We try to see what will work, and sometimes we find out what won't work as well. <laughs>